Hey everyone, Brian Stevenson here with Real Estate Law Plus, and today I want to talk about co-ownership agreements. Now, co-ownership agreements are commonly put into place where we have parties who are not necessarily related parties who are looking at buying a piece of property and operating it moving forward on a joint basis. Now, it's not exclusive to non-related individuals. I actually have clients who are brothers who are looking at investing in a piece of property, and it's important that we understand what the rights and obligations are going to be as between the two brothers, in addition to what would happen in the event that plans change and things will and do change when it comes to people's lives. So when you're making these types of joint investments, we need to understand what those obligations will be moving forward, hence the co-ownership agreement. So today I just want to talk about 10 things to consider and be aware of when your clients are looking at purchasing property in a joint fashion so that you can help better prepare your clients for what's to come. Now, one of the first things you need to consider with the co-ownership agreement are encumbrances against the property. What sort of security from a financial perspective are the parties willing to accept? Is it just gonna be a traditional mortgage? Will there be a line of credit component that they're permitting to go on there? It's important that the co-ownership agreement dictates what sort of encumbrances are permitted. Secondly, you want to make sure that how the property is to be used is to be addressed. Is it this is an investment property that's going to be used to generate rental income? If so, how is that rental income going to be dealt with? Is it going to be split between the parties, put into a joint bank account? You want to get those details settled in writing early on. Thirdly, you have to look at the overall management for the property. Is there going to be one party who is more invested in terms of time and effort into maintaining the property or being in charge of things? Is there a more passive investor? Is there going to be an allocation of certain rights and obligations as a result? We need to make sure that's clear ahead of time as well. Fourth, you also want to consider what are the costs associated with the property and how are those going to be divided amongst the owners? Is there going to be an individual actually living in the property and are they going to have a greater share of responsibility when it comes to operating costs like utilities, etc.? Or are there going to be an equal share of the property taxes amongst all of the different owners? Keep in mind when we're talking about all of this, it's not necessarily just two people buying a property. It could be three, four, five, what have you. Now when it comes to multiple people owning the property, you also need to keep in mind who is contributing what sort of funds to that initial purchase. So as number five, you want to consider the cash contributions made and how that's going to play out when it comes to the actual transaction to acquire, but then upon sale, what happens with the proceeds and the distribution of those as well. Another thing to consider is what happens if there's a default between the parties in terms of their obligations from one person to another. If someone's not pulling their weight or meeting what they're supposed to be doing, is there going to be an arbitration clause invoked, mediation? Is there going to be some form of tie-breaking mechanism between the parties, especially when you have an odd or even number? You need to consider how that's going to work. You want to plan for the divorce, it's called. You also need to keep in mind how are you going to deal with buying out an owner whose life plan may have changed and whereas everyone had agreed that they're going to buy and hold this property for a long term, suddenly someone needs to liquidate some of their assets, this uh, portion of their interest included. What happens when you're going to be doing that sort of buy and sell? Is that individual going to be allowed to sell to third parties or family members or are co-owners going to have the first right of refusal when it comes to making an offer on purchasing that interest? All of that should be dealt with in the co-ownership agreement as well. Now, the death of a co-owner should be addressed as well. What happens if one of the individuals passes away? Will their interest in the property automatically flow over to the others as a result of a right of survivorship? Or suddenly is an estate process going to be followed where a third party family member now acquires an interest in a property and the original investors weren't necessarily comfortable with having someone they weren't uh, aware of or knew suddenly a business partner in their venture. So you want to be cognizant of what's going to happen upon the death of one or more of the individuals who are on title. And finally, the last two things I want to share is I do highly recommend that the existence of co-ownership agreements be brought up to clients early in the process just so they have an awareness of an option that they may not have been previously aware of. Knowing that there's a tool out there that can help them if they do have unequal contributions, for example, or there will be some parties doing more than others and maybe previously the partners didn't think that they could do such an arrangement uh, and if everything wasn't equal, it wasn't going to work, well, this could be a tool that they could use to help get them into the market as a result of investing into something where there will be some rights and obligations that cover them off. The last thing, of course, if anyone has any questions about co-ownership agreements, uh, please do chat with a lawyer. I'm happy to assist clients uh, at any stage in the transaction. However, it's always great when we're able to get in there earlier on to help set some expectations, to help placate some fears, and to just really inform and educate the clients as to what they can do and try to structure things as optimally as possible. If anyone has any questions, comments, please leave them down below. I love to chat, of course, and any anecdotes, please share those too. Have a great day, guys. I want talk soon. Thanks.